Whether or not colony collapse disorder is something new or a combination of factors that has come about from our old problems is still up in the air. There's a lot of things that honeybees are exposed to, poor nutrition, pesticides, um, parasitic mites, uh, things like that that have weakened bees for, for a number of years. It could be that just those factors are coming together or we could have a novel pathogen that's involved. Um, the one symptom of colonies that are experiencing this is that they, they lose their adult bee population rather rapidly. The, the, the worker bees die off in a really short time frame. So that's the symptom that we're really focusing on. And we know that they lose bees in a, in a hurry because inside the hive you still have frames and frames of young bees brewed in the form of larvae or pupae. They're on those combs. So you know the colony was strong right before it collapsed and now you come back, there's brood present, young bees, but no adult bees. And actually that does fit a pathogen fairly well, the, the, the spread of a pathogen when they're hive. But even if it is a pathogen, it may be set up by stress on the bee colony that's come about because of these other factors. So we think it's multifactorial. There's a lot of people working on it. And it could be that it's just something that we hadn't really recognized as being distinct in the past. It's just an amalgamation of a lot of our other problems. Let's go. We're going to the tower. Let's go. <laughs> the utility corridor was actually created not specifically for bee habitat. It turns out that it is great bee habitat and it's one of these things that's very rare in the environment now, but in the and the power line rights of way are common. And the reason is, is that instead of herbiciding the whole corridor or mowing the whole thing all the time, they allow shrubs and low growing plants to grow and they just cut out the tall ones. So that it's a much richer environment. And it turns out that the plants that do well there are also the plants that produce lots of flowers and nectar and pollen and therefore attract lots of bees. And a lot of bee species need, and even though they're feeding on all this great um, uh, shrubby habitat, they need certain, have certain requirements for nesting. It might be sand, it might be clay, it might be open soil. And so this creates some um, of that open habitat, whereas in general, the power line rights of way people are looking to create closed canopy, shrubby environments so that it um, basically represses the growth of new trees. And so that's to their advantage. But this allows some uh, open habitats for some of these bees to nest in. It attracts lots of rare species of bees that uh, locally and um, regionally don't occur very often. So it turns out to be a, that way of managing power lines, in addition to reducing herbicides, um, is a big boon to wildlife. We, we're talking about bees now, but it turns out that also many other species of wildlife are um, benefited by that kind of habitat, which is regionally uncommon now.